However, it is our observation that due to the complexity of influences upon the unmanifested being at this space-time nexus among your planetary peoples, it is best that the progress of the mind-body-spirit complex take place without, as you call them, training aids. Because when using a training aid, an entity then takes upon itself the law of responsibility for the quicken or increase rate of learned teachings. If this greater understanding, if we may use this misnomer, the misnomer being understanding, is not put into practice in the moment by moment experience of the entity, then the usefulness of the training aid becomes negative. Um, okay, so let's let's go little by little here. So it is our observation that due to the complexity of influence upon a manifested uh, being at this space-time nexus, okay, in essence, all they're saying is you would recommend, we would recommend you to develop your mind-body-spirit complex without the use of aids, training aids like the pyramid. Um, because when you use training aids, an entity then takes upon itself the law of responsibility. The way I interpret the law of responsibility is that once you have seen what you have seen, you better use it cannot be unseen. Um, this is what happens when you use training aids. And in training aids, I'm inclined to believe that psychedelics are part of this because you're accessing a higher intelligence in you, okay? Uh, something is happening within you. And this is why people say it transformed their lives. Uh, not everybody, so I'm not, um, I'm not saying everybody that uses psychedelics can see this, but the vast majority of people apparently have this re uh, results and reaction. But any training aid that quickens, that's the, the word, the key word here for the quicken or increased rate of learned teaching. When you do that, then you better put it into use because the law of responsibility says that you will be stuck. Uh, how this becomes negative, I'm not sure if what they mean, they mean here. This is, take it with a grain of salt. In fact, I'll play, I'll play devil's advocate here. This may mean that it becomes negative. Like say, let me give you an example. So you learn something, uh, say you went on a retreat or something. I don't know if that's a training aid, proper training aid. Psychedelics, or you use the pyramid, whatever. And you have, or you visited a guru, you know, you went, yes, you know, and you, you learn all this stuff. If you don't apply this to your life, right? But that's what they say. Uh, it's not put into practice in the moment by moment experience of the entity. That means put it into practice in your life. Um, if you don't do this, what happens? You're gonna feel stuck inside. Like you're gonna feel this energy stuck in you. You're going to repress it for reasons. Um, I'll give you my personal example of what happened to me with the use of psychedelics and how um, I personally, you know, used it to to see, you know, what is it that it wanted to show me. And hence, I'm here talking to nobody with a camera and a microphone. <laughs> but um, if you don't do this, then you'll be stuck. But to give you the first example of somebody, uh, I've actually met people who have done, and I'll just talk about psychedelics because that's what, I, this is one of my experiences. I know people who have taken psychedelics and they continue to have blockages. They didn't they didn't want to face the self. They continue to do uh, what they were doing before. And they seem very uh, stressed out. They seem very anxious. And uh, although they carry within themselves the, the lessons that they learn, it's almost like they become even more comp complicated inside because of this, because they have seen the light, yet they continue to live in darkness. And so this light is 
kind of like concentrating there. I don't believe this is only for psychedelics, obviously. I think anything, which is if you get a mystical experience, if you have revelatory dreams, if uh, any catalyst that is so intense and you don't use it for revealing the self, then, and we're all victims of this, we all have our blockages, right? But if we don't do this, then we become a lot more uh, complicated inside. We become repressed. So that's what I think they mean here, that it needs to be put into um, into usefulness. Uh, how that's done, I don't know, because everybody's different, whatever it may be. Uh, become a nicer person at work with your family or start doing what you want to do. Stop playing around and play music. You want to play music, go play music. You want to go, go do your crafts, do your crafts, you know. You want to stop working where you're working because you feel like you're being pushed around and neglected and you don't feel it anymore. Stop doing it. Whatever it is that this revealed to you, do it, otherwise you'll be stuck. So to play devil's advocate, I would say that it can become a negative polarized thing. Maybe that's what they meant with becomes negative. Or it could mean also that it becomes negative in the sense that it's not positive. Positive in the way of development. Positive being forward to development, negative being repressive of development. So take it with a grain of salt. I'm not sure what they meant, but that's what I'll interpret. And lastly, um, it all goes down to the same thing, you see. Oh, and I forgot to give you my example, which I'll give briefly. But it all comes down to the same thing. Consciously be aware of your thoughts. Consciously be aware of your life and see what it's offering to you. Accept anything that comes your way and you'll be fine. You don't need to do any workshops in the weekends and you know meditation every day. To Although I do recommend meditation every day. I mean, there is no teacher that wouldn't recommend meditation every day for reasons that I won't get into here. But uh, yeah, just apply what you know. Apply what you know, always. Now, to give you my example, I uh, just a quick refresher. I'm sorry, we're coming up in time here. Almost, I'm always mindful of the hour. But uh, I'll share to you, with you, my experience, which you may know if you follow me in my channel and my social media, but mainly here on YouTube, you should know. I was an atheist, almost a nihilist. I didn't believe in anything. Suddenly, I took uh, psychedelics in a ceremony. I didn't even believe in psychedelics. I just knew that they play with your brain, something. So I took it and something happened. I realized that there was something more to this universe. And I said, I need to now as a scientist that I always was, I need to make sense of this reality with my analysis and my organizational skills and everything that I was. And so consciousness was the big thing that stood out for me. And I said, well, Consciousness is BS in mainstream science. They don't even know what it is. So let me find out what it is. That was the rabbit hole that brought me here. And um, part of that is not just the development of my, my research and investigation, but I had been repressing for over two decades my desire to communicate, to express myself through a audio visual mean and through audio as well. And lo and behold, here I am talking again to a microphone and a camera. Like I said, not because I think this is the way, Mandalorian style, um, to um, to improve or to you know share what you learn, but just because this is what I was. I always was. And in little parts of my life, I could see that I always wanted to do this. But yeah, just do, do what you feel you want to do. So this is why three years later, I'm here dedicated to this because it's my passion. I love talking, I love expressing myself, and I love reality the way I'm understanding it. Speaking of reality.